Hello again everyone, I'm Brian Brown Doohan and I'm here to play another Versus video. Uh, this time I'm playing a deck that won the Classic in Louisville last weekend. It is uh, Prime Speaker Bant. Basically, this deck is green-white, uh, ramp into fatties with uh, splashing for Prime Speaker Zagana just as another big top-end threat. Um, and honestly, this deck is pretty sweet. I've, I've played a little bit with it last night on uh, Magic Online and I was really happy with it. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to play. It does a lot of awesome things. So uh, I'm going to dive right in and talk some about, about some of the cards here. Uh, start out with the mana base. Um, pretty standard stuff here. We got Temple Gardens, Breeding Pools, and Forests. Uh, we have 13 Forests between Temple Garden and Breeding Pool and, and, and the basics. So uh, Arbor Elf is going to be turned on almost all the time. Uh, we also have one Hallowed Fountain, which we can search up with Farseek. And uh, the other thing about the mana base is three Gabney Township. And this is a card that hasn't seen a lot of play recently. I uh, saw a lot of play last year, but uh, lately people haven't really been playing it that much. But it's actually very, very good in a deck like this. We have, um, I believe the number is 29 creatures in this deck. So Gavany is going to, you know, it's basically a spell as a land. And with eight mana dorks, like we're going to have hands where we draw a lot of land and don't necessarily have a lot of things to do with it. And Gavany is really going to give us something to do. And it turns these guys from just pure mana, uh, mana ramping th cards into actual threats later on in the game. And on that note, we have 12 ramp spells, which basically the deck wants to be casting a 1-drop on turn 1 and a far seek on turn 2. And then on turn 3, you want to cast something like a Garrick or a Thrag Tusk. So uh, your best hands all involve casting you know, one of these cards on turn 1 and either another one or a far seek on turn two so that's that's kind of the core of the deck and uh, we want to basically probably mulligan most hands that don't have any of these just because we might be a little too slow in that in case to fight our opponent's deck beyond that we have three strang root geists uh, this is probably the card that's least powerful in the deck this is probably the card that could get changed um, you know if there's something else that that fits it better but the basic purpose for this card is uh, to serve as a roadblock against aggressive decks is the general purpose of it. Uh, because of the Undying ability and, and Pillar of Flame isn't really seeing a lot of play right now, Strangroot Geist actually can oftentimes be a two for one against any of the aggressive decks. And a lot of times, rather than attack into it, they'll just pass the turn because they don't want to let you get so much value out of the card. So it's just really good at, at buying you time. And once you get to an end game of like Angel Serenity and Prime Speaker Zagana, you're going to beat those decks, so um, just something to buy time like this is, is really powerful. And it also combos well with Restoration Angel because you can block something, have it come back with Undying, and then you can use Restoration Angel to reset it. Um, we have three or four Locks on Smiters. Smiter is, in my opinion, much better than Centaur Healer, even against aggressive decks, because uh, gaining three life is worse than having four toughness uh, against a format where like Searing Spear is one of the most played cards. And... Loxon Smiter is also a huge threat against other decks too, um, whereas something like Centaur Healer really isn't as much of a threat. So I, I love Loxon Smiter a lot. Um, it makes aggressive decks unable to attack through you against uh, like you know the blue white red decks or Esper Control decks. It hits them pretty hard and uh, puts enough pressure on them to make them have to act in in response to it. Uh, beyond that, we have the classic uh, Thrag Tusk Resto combo that. Sure, you all are pretty familiar with. I don't really need to go into too much detail about that. And uh, we also have Angel Serenity here at our top end. Uh, Angel is very good with uh, all the ramp spells. You can cast her on like turn five or whatever. And then the other card we have is Prime Speaker Zagana, which hasn't seen a lot of play and is actually very good, uh, especially in a deck like this where you can you can use all your ramp spells to cast like a Sphinx's Revelation. Or you could just play a Prime Speaker Zagana and draw the same amount of cards and do it much faster and present put a threat into play. So um, this card is very powerful, and I'm happy that it finally found a, a home. Um, I was hoping that someone would, would end up finding a deck that, that breaks her. So, And then the, I guess the, the final thing we have here is we have uh, three Garrick Primal Hunters. And uh, Garrick is much like Prime Speaker. It's just like a big draw X cards type of card. You're like... With Garrick, a lot of times what you're going to do is you're just going to play him, and you're just going to draw five cards off your Thrag Tusk or uh, five cards off your Angel or four cards off your Loxanon Smiter. 
just to keep the, the fuel going because once you once you start drawing a bunch of cards you just like fuel into more card draw into more big threats like angels and it just becomes impossible for your opponent to win so uh, having garrick and prime speaker to draw his cards means like we're going to keep the gas flowing even through the late game but uh this is the deck i'm going to talk now about the sideboard for a little bit all right we're back for the sideboard uh, i'm going to start out with uh syncopate which is a pretty sweet card in a deck like this because I mean, it's a lot of the control decks they are going to, or even decks like a reanimator deck, or even some of the mid rangey decks like Jund, uh, they're going to try to set up for one big, like, blow you out play. And uh, Syncopate's just kind of a no, you know, denied that. And uh, the reason to play Syncopate over something like Dissipate is because a uh, double blue is, is a little harder to get in this deck. Um, I know we do have some double blue cards like uh, Prime Speaker and also Jace here, but. Um, a card like Syncopate that you want to cast early in the game, a lot of times, you, you just want to make sure that it's castable and not, not mess around with the ability, like, worry about having to have double blue for it. Uh, Rest in Peace is primarily for any kind of reanimator deck, uh, the human reanimator decks especially, uh, as because th those matchups are very difficult. Uh, you're not fast enough and you don't uh, present, like, unique enough threats to beat those decks without... Uh, a little bit of help. So that's that's where Rest in Peace and also Syncopate come in and just helping to beat those kinds of decks. Centaur Healer is for uh, aggressive matchups just to kind of uh, supplement our Loxodon Smiters as like a good card to play on turn two to kind of brick wall them, gain a little bit of life. It also plays well with Restoration Angel. That's basically the purpose of a card like Centaur Healer. Detention Spear is just an all-purpose answer. There's a number of uh, different decks like that are playing cards that you, you just want a Detention Spear. Um, so this could come in in like a wide variety of matches, but it's just there to kind of play a catch-all purpose. Uh, Silk Lash Spider is a card we haven't seen in a while, and this saw a lot of play back when Zombies was popular because it was a good answer to Falcon Wrath Aristocrat and Dralf's Messenger. Um, and the reason I'm playing it now is because a lot of times, like you, you need another roadblock against aggressive decks at, at like a big one, and people are starting to play stuff like. Um, uh, Thundermaw Hellkite, also Falconrath Aristocrat, uh, are starting to see a lot more play right now. So, you know, that's that's mainly what that's for. Jace Memory Adept is an awesome card against any kind of control deck. And I actually like it a lot against mid-range decks too, which that's not really its intended purpose, but it is good there as well. Uh, against a control deck, they, they really have to respect this card. They have to be able to remove it from play or it's going to win the game. And even if they do have a way to remove it from play, if you can just plus one at every turn, you're going to start generating enough of an advantage to really put them behind. And then the final Garrick is just there for mid-range and control matchups as well. Uh, I just I like I love the fact that this deck has access to all four Garrick Primal Hunters because that card is just such a beating against those decks. And because of all of our ramp spells, we can cast it as early as turn three. But uh, this is the Prime Speaker Band deck. I'm pretty excited to play it, and hopefully uh, it'll perform.